the best, why it's important to know, and then strategies that you can use that will complement your learning style or styles. <laughs> We're delighted to have you. <laughs> okay. Um, I have someone out in, I don't have your, uh, is it Toma? Veropa? You're sitting, you're sitting in the back of the room by yourself. Can you tell us where you're at? Black River. Thank you very much. And you, you have the materials? You do have the materials. Okay, great. Perfect. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, you're going to take a little quiz. <laughs> it's not hard, though, because all you need to do is look at the directions, and then you need to answer the questions. So you're going to circle a yes to something or no. Oh, that's like the same as we did at the Okay, so I just passed out a little survey, and I want you to go ahead and do that, please. The question was, what is finger spelling? And that's simply spelling with your finger. <laughs> so 208, did you, did you get that, the spelling with your finger, the finger spelling? Is it okay now? Oh, are you okay though? Do you oh, okay. <laughs> well, they seem to be audio. <laughs> Sir Echo. This should be fun today. <laughs> Okay, when you're finished, what you want to do is to add up your squares, and the squares represent kinesthetic, and that's spelled K-I-N-E-S-T-H-E-T-I-C, and then add up your inverted triangles, which represent visual, and add up your um, 
ovals which represent auditory. So the squares represent, you say that you're a kinesthetic learner. The inverted triangles say that you're a visual learner. And the ovals say that you're an auditory learner. So that's the first, first piece that we want to establish. How do you learn best? How many of you knew before you took this how you learned? What was your best way of learning? All right, some of you did, and that's good. Did it match what you thought? No. Did it match what you thought? Okay. What this is saying to you is that if you are a kinesthetic learner, how many of you had that was your highest, was the kinesthetic learner? What that means is that you learn best by actually doing something. So if you have a model, it's taking that, just not just looking at the model, but taking that model apart, feeling the shape, the size, putting it back in. So if you're in the nursing field, probably you're going to do very well in clinicals. And if you're an A&P or any uh, subject that has models in it that you can take apart, that's going to be very good for your learning style. If you're a visual person, that means you prefer your information to receive the information that you're going to get through your eyes. You need to see it. And I will tell you right off that I'm a very visual person. And I see everything in my mind in a picture of subtype. And if I'm going to, if I've been assigned a project to do, it's all mapped out in my mind. I see it visually in my head long before I actually sit down to do the project. It's all planned out in my head. I visually see it. And I have, that's just the way I learn. And therefore, I need to use strategies that will reinforce that learning. And if you're auditory, then you need to hear information. It's very important for you to hear information. That's how you process it best, is through the auditory. So how many of you came out very strong that your top learning style is visual? You're a visual person. OK. And how many of you came out as an auditory learner? That means you want to hear the information. You hear it. You need to hear it in order to connect with it. How many? Raise your hands again if you're auditory. Yes. Sure. The, um, I just make it. the square is kinesthetic. The inverted triangle is visual. And the oval is auditory. How many people were all three evenly? Anybody all three evenly? No. How many of you were two that were even? All right. Some of you might be two. And anyone who was like within a point of each, like kinesthetic maybe uh, eight and, and visual seven and, and auditory six or something like that? Okay. Some of you. So some of you... What this means is some of you are very one learning style. You're either auditory, visual, or kinesthetic. Some of you may be a combination of two, and some of you may be a combination of three. And it simply means that you have more pathways to the brain that you want to use. Not that you shouldn't use all of them at all times anyway. But here's how normally we find it breaks down. Surveys indicate that 35% of people are mainly visual learners. 35% are mainly visual learners. Pictures are very important to those people. 25% of people are mainly auditory learners. They talk and lecture are very important to that type of person. 
and 40 percent, the majority of people are mainly physical learners. Some form of hands-on experience is very good and very important for them. Okay. Now, what are the reasons why you should know your learning style or styles? First, it allows you to know and understand yourself better. So, and, and as to what kind of a learner you are. And it also, it's very important, in order to understand other people, you really have to know yourself first. How do I understand somebody else if I don't know who I am and how I learn first? And all of you, in most cases, will be dealing with all kinds of learners. They may not be the same type of learner that you are. And therefore, if you're a visual person, you can't expect that everyone else will be a visual person. They, they might be auditory, they might be kinesthetic, they might be a combination. So I always say to nursing students that when you are in the clinic or you're at the hospital and you're dismissing a patient and you have to give that patient directions for at home, then you need to give, you need to give it orally in case they're an auditory person. You need to give it in the written in case they're a visual person. And you also need to demonstrate it so that they understand it. And then, of course, have them demonstrate it back. Because that way, you're pretty sure that they, they're going to have it. At least one of the learning styles is there for them to understand that information that you're giving. And whenever we deal with people, we need to understand that some people need to have maybe auditorily or, or visually. Or they need to do it. It helps you to pick the correct course delivery methods. If you're an auditory person, it's not a good idea to take an online course. It's a very poor idea. I had a student who called me this uh, beginning of the fall semester, and she said, I fail. I need a math tutor. She said, I, fa I failed it twice. And I said, how did you take the course? She said, online. I said, both times, yes. So I said, why don't you come in and let's do a learning style inventory on you. We did, and she was, an, she was a visual person. So online is just was not the way that she should have been taking courses. So a lot of people think, oh, online, that's going to be really simple. I'll take that course. But if a lot of people struggle, too, because it's not the way they learn the best. So it can help you to pick course delivery methods. It can help you select instructors with appropriate teaching techniques. If you're a kinesthetic person, you need to do a lot of hands-on. So you would want to pick a, a, an instructor. You want to find out who the instructors are. And when you have more choices, like in the general studies where you have a lot of different instructors teaching the different courses, then you really need to know what kind of instructor you're getting involved with. Because if that instructor does not teach the way you learn, chances are you're going to struggle. It also, learning styles can help you choose a career program that you might want to go into. Because some people get in the wrong career program not realizing that that really is, does not lend to their learning style. So again, it would be a good idea to know so that, to be sure that you are getting into the correct program. Another reason that you should know is how, if you're taking tests. If you're an auditory learner, it's really important for you to hear the test questions. You need to be saying the test questions out loud. You need to be processing the options out loud. I deal a lot with students who, especially in the nursing program, but other programs as well, who are sent to me on contract because they're doing poorly. They've done poorly on their tests. The first thing I do is to ask them what they're learning, or I give them a learning styles inventory. And many times, the reason is that they're very, they're an auditory person. And so my recommendation is that they take the test in the Academic Success Center where they can actually read the test questions out loud. We put them in one of our back rooms or one of our side rooms. They read the questions out loud and process the options out loud. That's how they connect to the information much better than to visually be sitting there and trying to internalize it through the eyes. 
If you're a kinesthetic person, oftentimes you're highly distracted by people and events and tapping and things going on around you, movement, uh, rustling of, of papers or books or whatever, and you're, you're just, your eyes are up and down all the time and you're not really focused on the test. Once again, I suggest very strongly that you might want to take the test in the Academic Success Center where we can put you in a room and there are very few distractions. It can make a big difference in the results of your tests. So if I don't know that I'm an auditory learner or that I'm really highly, uh, that I'm kinesthetic and it would be better for me to take tests there, I may be getting poor grades than I should be getting simply because I'm not taking the test in the best form or manner that I could be taking it and be successful. And the last reason that it's a good idea to know your learning style is that you can use strategies, study strategies, <clears throat> that complement your learning style. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to turn your paper over, now that you know what kind of a learning style, and I would keep this in case you ever need to come down to me for any reason so you can bring this and say, here's how I learned. We don't have to go through the little test again. So I would keep this because this could come in handy for you. All right, on the back, what I want you to do is to write your full name. First, middle, and last name. All right, now I want you to put your pen or pencil in the other hand and do the very same thing. It's amazing how quiet it was when you did it the first time, and now I hear these little snickers and these little comments. How would you compare the two? What's the difference? What's the, what's the difference? How would you describe? What words would you use to describe the difference? Preschooler's handwriting. Pardon? Preschooler's handwriting. Okay, preschooler handwriting. Chicken scratches. How do you feel about it? Horrible. Horrible? <laughs> Is it awkward? <laughs> Difficult? Time consuming? Takes longer? All those pieces? Okay, and this is exactly what happens if you're using incorrect study strategies. If you're using strategies that don't complement your learning style, you're, you're, the same thing is happening. It's going to be longer, it's going to take you longer, it's not going to be as, as good a quality, and uh, you're just going to be frustrated and stressed out, which none of us can afford. So, it's very important to know your learning style. Now, I want to take a look at the, at the different, um, I'm going to start off with uh, tactile kinesthetic, but let's look at tactile kinesthetic learners have the ability to use the body skillfully. That's, and see how these fit into, if you're a tactile kinesthetic person. You learn by getting directly involved. You learn by hands-on. You enjoy, in most cases, sports, games, physical exercise. You need to move, touch what, what, what's being learned, what you're, what you're doing. In other words, you, rather than just looking at it or hearing about it, you want to get up and actually do something with it because that's the, how you're going to learn. Exactly. You bet. You like action. It's very difficult for you to sit for long periods of time. That's another thing, too. If you're in a three-hour course for kinesthetic people, it's very, very difficult. And it also, it's very difficult for you to sit and study for long periods of time, and you shouldn't do it. You should take a lot of breaks. Uh, your study hour might look like um, a 10, 15, 5, 15, 5, 10 breakout. And the first 10 minutes would be reviewing, and, the, and we were talking about this in... in um, seminars coming up, but the first 15 minutes, the second, after the first 10 minutes, the 15 minutes would be a focus, maybe you're going to do, find two objectives or, or locate the information for two objectives and then you're going to take a break 
and then you're going to come back and pick up where you left off and do two more objectives, find the information, take notes out, and then take a break for five minutes, and then come back for ten minutes and maybe find one objective and the information, and then that's it for the hour. You need bigger breaks, and your body's going to tell you when you need to break. If you're a kinesthetic person, now visual people can often sit much longer, but as soon as the body tells you you need to take a break and then you need to not force yourself to sit there. Uh, kinesthetic people find it hard to sit still for long periods of time. That's just who you are, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just your body's telling you you've got to get up and move. You're distracted easily by need for activity and exploration, and others Others absolutely, uh, you know, everything you can look at or anything that moves you want to look at simply because um, that's who you are. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, visual learners, on the other hand, visual learners, they like, they're very visual. So they watch the teacher's body language and facial expressions. They read body language and facial expressions. So, they, they can tell when someone's frustrated by the facial expressions or the body language, or someone's upset or angry or happy. In other words, that's just who visual learners are. In most cases, they prefer sitting in front where they're close to the action. They think in pictures. They learn best from visual displays, so graphs, charts, figures, all of those pieces. I'd rather see the information in some kind of a pictorial than to have to read it all. So diagrams, illustrated textbooks, overhead transparencies, videos, flip charts, handouts, they like all those. They take detailed notes during lectures in most cases. They add visual aids for better association. So those are all pieces that help the visual learner and uh, support their learning and are good for them. And the auditory learners, they like verbal lectures, discussions, talking things through and listening to others. A lot of time, auditory people like to form a study group. That's really good for them because a lot of discussion goes on. Or they don't like that si a large size of maybe three or four or five people. Partner up with somebody who you feel comfortable with. And then, again, you can exchange ideas, teach each other, because you like to hear the information. You interpret underlying meanings of speech through listening to voice, tone, pitch, speed, and inflection. See the difference between the visual look, watches body language and facial expressions, and the auditory listens to the tone of the voice and the pitch and all of those pieces, the inflections. Written information may have little meaning until heard, therefore they need to read the information out loud. Some of you, if you have a real low visual, that means that that piece is, re is really low. It's just not your learning style at all and you need to compensate, and that may be why some of you have a tough time reading information. You need to verbalize more of it. You need to read it out loud so you can hear it, so you will understand it. That's how you're going to connect with that information and understand it, is by hearing it far more than just visually seeing it. So again, it's, it depends on how, who, who, how you learn. Auditory people are often reflective on information heard. All right, they want, what they do is they hear it and then they want to, they need to uh, walk away from it, reflect on it, and then the pieces come together. Is anyone like that in here? In other words, you, you hear it, but you need to sort of talk to yourself about it and then you understand it. There are a lot of people that are arbitrary that are that way. They hear it, but they have to really process it, walk away from the situation, process, and then put the pieces together. <laughs> So we look at this, what we find percentages, when we read information, look at this visual people, when we read information, we only get about 20% out of that. Only 20%, that's not very much. When we hear information, we get about 30% out of it. When we see it, 40%. When we say it, 50%. When we do it, 60%. When we see, say, hear, and do, 90%. So what does that tell you?
How are you going to learn the most information? Using all of those learning stra or those those you know, those learning styles. So just because you're high in one does not mean you should not use the other. They're all reinforcing because each of the learning styles is a different pathway to the brain. So if I've got three, if I'm using the auditory, I'm using the visual, and I'm using the kinesthetic, I'm doing something with it, then I'm going to learn more information. It's going to be very much more meaningful to me, and it's going to be easier for me to learn. So as a result, I'm going to now give you a sheet that looks like this. And we're going to talk about some of the strategies for these learning styles. Bob, do you have two more of these in there? Or do you? By chance? Actually, I only need one more. I just need one more because as soon as I'm finished, I'll give this one up. I just need what? Two more back there? Keegan. Two more in the back? Do you all, you all have one? In the back? You have the sheet? Oh, I guess I don't need any more of them. Okay. All right. All right. What I want to do now is I want to take a look at some strategies on this sheet that can be very helpful to you in, in learning and in, in cutting down your, your study time. So if we look at um, and the, out, the out extended campuses, you should have all of this. Black River, you have this, right? Yeah, okay. And is it? Is that, is it, who, who's my other extended campus out there? Is it Mawson? Okay. And you have your materials, Veropa? Great. Okay. Thank you. I just want to be sure everyone has materials. All right. Let's take a look at this. This is a, a sheet that these, these um, study strategies can be used for auditory, they can be used for kinesthetic, and they can be used for visual learners. For instance, the first one, take notes. Well, that's obviously, it's a visual because you can't take them without seeing them. And it is, it's an action, so it's a kinesthetic. Now, how could we make that an auditory? Exactly. So if I'm locating, I'm, I'm deciding in my textbook what's important, what notes I want to take out, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinpoint them and say them out loud. And then as I also write them on, into my notebook, or on my paper, how, wherever I'm putting them, then I'm going to say them out loud. So if you're an auditory person, you've got to hear that information. It's going to be much more meaningful you, for you to do it that way. The second one, which is use highlighting color code for key points in text. Line. This is very good for kinesthetic people and also visual people because there's a color coding, and I'm going to just explain to you how that works, but it's, a, it's something that's a visual and it's an action. So you're thinking about what you're going to code or what you're going, what you're going to take or what, what needs to be highlighted. And then you're using a, uh, a color code. For instance, for uh, terms that you 
terms that you know that you need to know or you, as you're reading, you figure you need to know, you might highlight those terms. I think they've all got them. I don't know what happened in the back, but I didn't have enough. But Thank you. So if, I, if there's a term that I know in my reading that I know I need to know, then I might highlight that yellow. So anything in yellow in my text all the way through are terms that I need to know. Now the definition, I would, I would highlight a different color, maybe blue. So when I find the definition to that term, sometimes they come right next to each other. Sometimes they come, the term is higher and the, the, the definition is lower or vice versa. So what I'm going to do so that I can connect them very quickly, if, especially if I use my textbook for studying purposes. So anytime I would see yellow, then I would know immediately it's a term and there should be blue that's highlighted to, to have the matching definition. And then any other facts that are key that I know I need to know, maybe I would do in pink. That would be a color coding. That's a very good for a visual person for studying. It's also good because it's for kinesthetic people because it's an action as well as a visual. And if I was an auditory person, I would throw in the voice. As I'm doing it, I would add the voice because I need to hear that information and in what is important. So highlighting, that can, so that can fit all three. Handling objects, tools, machinery to learn. Very kinesthetic. But also very visual. Because I'm seeing how everything works or where everything should be placed. So if I'm taking apart the pieces, the important organs for a body system, and I'm taking it out, I can take that model apart, and I'm taking it out, then I can handle it. I can touch it, feel it, get the shape, and then I can put it back in. So maybe it goes between the bladder and the kidney. Maybe it goes above the, the heart or below the heart, or maybe it goes to the left of the bladder. In other words, I can talk to myself about this as well. So again, all three learning styles. In addition to that, if I want to, I can take, let's say that I, I can't always be in the lab to, to work on, uh, on uh, the model. So maybe I'm going to bring my camera in and take a picture of that model. And I'm going to take it home, that picture home, and maybe I can even enlarge it. And I can write the body parts on that and study from it at home. And if I even want to be clever and pull an action to it, maybe I can cut it up and have a model at home that I can... I can work, manipulate. So this is something that, you know, I don't always have to come in. I can actually do this at home as, at, as well as do it on the, bot, on the model itself. So again, it's simply being creative. And as I'm doing this, I'm just going to say those parts and, and put the voice to it. And if I'm doing that, if I'm using all three, the visual, the, the kinesthetic, and the auditory, I'm even going to be more supportive with that information if it's going in. Point to words, ideas as you read. So again, that would be an action. That's kinesthetic. So if I'm a kinesthetic person, as I'm picking out points that I know I need to know, I'm going to point to them. That's an action. And I'm going, visually I'm seeing them, or I'm not going to be able to point them out, and I put the voice to it if I'm auditory. So there again, I can make it all three. Finger spell in the air, on a table, or in sand. Those are just a few of the ideas. Um, and many of the programs you need to be, you need to understand and be able to spell the vocabulary terms, uh, especially in the health field. And they, some of them are really hard because many of them are very similar. If I had to work on that, then I, the finger spelling is good if I'm a tactile concrete person. Or just to have a little box of sand or rice that I can, whatever the texture is that I feel comfortable with, it's going to connect with me and help me make that connection. I can do, I can spell in the rice or in the sand, little shoe box of sand or rice. Or if you want something even simpler, you could go to the um, craft store or a material store, and let's say you like something soft, you could buy a piece of velvet, just a scrap piece of velvet, and when you needed to work on writing uh, a word or learning a word, a particular spelling, you could write on the velvet if that's the touch that you feel you connect with. Or it could be a piece of silk, you know, if you really like expensive silk. Or it could be, um, if you want something that's a little bit rougher, it could be like burlap, a piece of burlap. 
or whatever that you, you would feel uh, or fur or whatever it is that you would like to do, that's a very good way to learn because you're going to remember it. When you're on a test and you're thinking, okay, I remember spelling that word, I remember how I spelled it and where I spelled it, and I can remember the touch or I can remember hearing it. So those are all pieces that you can pull together on that particular uh, strategy. Again, manipulating models of any type um, are good. Cutting ideas to be learned into pieces and used as a puzzle. I really like this one a lot. If I need to know a procedure that has maybe several steps to it, maybe it's taking blood pressure or how to um, do an IV, then I, I'm going to write those steps out and I'm going to cut them up and I'm going to do it kinesthetically. I'm going to, to order those, those uh, steps in the order that they should be. Now, if you're a kinesthetic person, you're going to learn those steps much faster that way than if you simply stare at them visually and try to learn them that way. And if you're auditory, you put the voice to it. As you're ordering, you talk to yourself out loud about what you're doing, what comes first, what comes second, what comes third, what comes fourth, what comes fifth, or whatever that it is that you're trying to learn. So you've got the manipulating piece. You've got, you're visually seeing it or you're not going to be able to do it. And you've got the, the auditory piece as well. And those can be very powerful for you. Very, very powerful steps for you. And again, by using all three, that simply reinforces that's three pathways coming in rather than one single pathway coming into the brain. So all three pathways simply reinforce each other. So I, I really like that. I think it's a very, this one's a very, um, very helpful, very good. You can also draw ideas to show relationships. That, that too is an action. Now some of you might be very good drawers. A picture's worth a thousand words. But just the action of drawing it, a picture to represent information that you're getting uh, it, it can be very effective. Now even if you aren't a good drawer, you can use stick figures or just very, as long as it's meaningful to you and it's showing a relationship. And again, Put the voice to it. As you're drawing it, describe it. Talk about it. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? And how are you doing it? And what does it mean? And again, you're getting that reinforcement. Most all of you should be using computer programs, calculators, and CD-ROMs if they're available because they're very good for auditory, kinesthetic, and visual learners. Many of your textbooks have CD-ROMs in the back of them. Um, many of your programs uh, the instructors have additional CD-ROMs that they recommend that you watch, that you, uh, that you uh, take part in. Uh, we have uh, one for chemistry over in the Academic Success Center, and it's often used by students who come over there to, to uh, work off of that. But the CD-ROMs, it's amazing to me when students come in, some of them never even touch the CD-ROM at the back of the book. And a lot of textbooks nowadays have CD-ROMs that are in tucked in pockets in the back. And those are very helpful. I would recommend very strongly that you use those because, again, uh, they're very supportive of the information in your textbook. They may explain it in a different way and show it in a different way that might be very advantageous to the way that you learn. So I would suggest just those areas. Another um, kinesthetic is dramatize or role play. Some of you probably like to do that but maybe hadn't thought about doing that with some of the information that you might need to learn. Um, role playing, again, is getting the body involved in it. And again, if I were doing that, I would also talk about it. And I would visualize what I was doing. You know, what role am I playing in order to demonstrate what I need to know. The one thing about learning, you can be, the, the sillier you are about connecting with information, the, the, so the sillier, the more wacky it is, the more times you connect information, the, the easier it is for you to remember that information because you will reflect on where I was sitting when I said that or I saw that or who I was with. Uh, and those are connections that help you to connect back. So when you're in a test and you're, you're trying to pull back some information, you might think, oh, 
I was sitting with uh, Sue when I went over that. We had a conversation about that, and she was dressed in blue. And so all these little pieces are what starts to bring back the specific information that you are trying to remember. Or I remember her saying something in a certain tone, or I remember what she was wearing, or how she was dressed, or how she was acting. These are all things that you can use as pieces of connection to remember material. Create graphic organizers and cut apart and reassemble. That's the same as um, the above, except you may, if you have information that at all can be formed into some kind of a graphic organizer, whether it's a chart of some type. So maybe I'm looking at the, the meds that could be used for seizures or the meds that could be used for um, high cholesterol. Then I might want to group those into some kind of a chart that I, where this information is, is all together. And then that might be a chart that I might want to, to cut up as well. Uh, maybe I'm comparing high blood pressure medicine and cholesterol medicine. So I might write all the, the prescriptions down and the meds for, for high cholesterol and all the meds for heart. And then I might cut them up and put them in envelopes with just an envelope and labeled high blood pressure medicine, high cholesterol medicine. And then I can dump those out and then I'm going to say, okay, this one goes with high cholesterol, this one goes with high blood pressure, this one goes. So again, you're going to learn more that way than you are just trying to memorize that information in, in your textbook or in your notes. So it might take you a few more minutes to, to write those down and cut them up. But I think it, in the long run, it's going, to send you, it's going to save you a lot of time. So you might be able to organize something in a circle graph, a figure of some type. You might be able a flow chart. Uh, however you want to organize. Again, it's an action. It's a very kinesthetic. It's a visual. And if I'm an auditory, I'm going to say it out loud as I'm doing it. And that's very, very reinforcing. Uh, kinesthetic people often doodle as they study or at the, and they're in class. Um, if you have a pen or a pencil and you, you are in the habit of tapping auditory people, absolutely, you're just absolutely driving them up a wall because they're tuning into that. They're hearing that. And so they're, they're hyper and they're, they're not focused because that's what they hear. Many auditory people are very um, distracted by the, if you're taking a computer test and everyone around is clicking a mouse. That's very distracting to auditory people. And so oftentimes um, we will have, the, those are the people that we have down in the center and we simply put them on one of our, we have a computer in one of our back rooms where um, you can take the test and there's nobody else cooking or, or disturbing you. So that, that can be um, a problem. Uh, some people, uh, you, can, you can usually tell a, a person who's kinesthetic, they're always doing something. They're moving. They can have a hard time sitting still. They want to move. They're playing with their hair. They're always playing with something. And you just want to be sure, that, and, and that's good because that helps you to focus a little bit longer, whether you're studying. Even when you're taking a test, it helps you to focus. You're in class listening. It's a long day, and you're listening that can help you focus. We suggest very strongly having some kind of a cush ball or something that you that's quiet, that you can manipulate in your hands, not the pen and pencil, because all of a sudden you, you, know, you might be doing something like this and all of a sudden the pencil flies off because you, you, know, you lost control of it. So again, it's having something that you feel good about. And there's just a ton of things out there in the market. And we have a lot of little toys also down in the Academic Success Center that are small, that have different textures, that that, uh, you know, if you're really kinesthetic and you need to have something, you can come down and we'll, we'll give you something. Um, and some people do doodle while they're, at, and um, I would have to say this, that years ago I taught, well, way back when I started, my first year of teaching, I taught second grade. And I had a little boy in there. His name is Stephen, cute little boy. And he had a little car he brought with him and played with every solitary day. And every solitary day I take it away from him and say, Stephen, you're not focused. You put that on my desk and pick it up on your way out and please don't bring it tomorrow. Well, he brought it every day. I would never take that away from him now. I have learned a lot myself. Because, in fact, I often wonder whatever happened to those second graders that I first taught because I, I probably learned more than they did <laughs> that year. Uh, because that was probably what was keeping him focused. 
chances are that really what was allowed him to stay focused in the classroom was that playing with that little car. So, uh, you know, many ADD students or ADHD students um, have a lot of kinesthetic. They're very kinesthetic. And uh, I think really we need to pay a little attention that, to that because it's not that you're a bad person or that you really have a major problem. It's just that we as instructors need to, you need to know how you learn and you need to know it's not a disease and it's not, it's not necessarily a major problem, that it's just that you need to have a few uh, of the little push balls and things to keep you busy. You can't sit for long periods of time and you probably need a lot of action to learn material. So uh, I think if instructors, you know, taught more towards that, and we have a lot of you, that, you know, you probably would be happier in some cases. Underlining key ideas is a little bit different than the highlighting. Some people like to just underline with their pencil or a finger. Again, that's an action. So here's what's important. I'm visually seeing it, and I talk it out loud. Put ideas. I really like this one. This is another. Some of these, as you can see, are, are darker, uh, are a little bit bolder, and that's because some of these, I, those that I really, really like, I think they're really excellent. Put ideas on post-its around your living quarters. I think this is, is really a neat one. If you want to learn information, really learn information, this is one way that you can do this. What you want to do is to get the really bright colored post-its, not the dull yellow ones, but the, the lime green or the bright orange or the bright pink or the uh, goldenrod or whatever that is bright. And you say, okay, tomorrow I really want to focus on five key ideas that I want to learn. So you pull out those five ideas and you pull out five post-its and you write one of those key pieces on each one of the post-its. So maybe it's a term and a definition, a procedure. Maybe it's the pills for um, seizure control. Uh, you know, whatever it is. And then you look at your day the next day. So my next day is Tuesday, and I'm going to say, okay, where am I going to be a lot tomorrow? Well, I'm going to go into the refrigerator because i got to eat. So I'm going to probably be in there several times. So I'll put one on the refrigerator, and I'll put one on the dash of my car because I'm going to be in and out of my car quite a few times. And maybe on the bathroom mirror because I'm going to be in there several times. And maybe on the pantry and maybe on the door of my apartment or my house because I'm going to be in and out of there several times the next day. So I get up in the morning and I go to the refrigerator to get out the juice. And I take, I, first of all, I see that bright orange post-it. I take it off, which is an action. I read the information, uh, or I see the information, and I read it out loud. Then I put it back. Get my juice out. I close the refrigerator. I do the same thing. So if I've gone in that refrigerator five times that day, I have seen that information ten times. Now, that's a lot more than you're normally going to see information. At the end of the day, I go around, and if I feel comfortable that I know that information, I pull it off. So if I, four of them out of the five, I feel very comfortable, I know, I pull the four off, I leave the fifth one up, because I need, still need work on it, and I put four more up for the next day with new information. When I take them off, I stack them. They stack very nicely, and then at least two times a week, I have what I call a strategic review, and I simply go through my stack of post-its that, that I've taken off, just to keep the information fresh. And it won't take me long to do that, because I shouldn't have taken it down in the first place unless I felt comfortable that I knew it. And, that, and so if you were to do that seven days a week, that would be 35 pieces of information that you would learn very thoroughly each week and you would have it down pat, rather than trying to spend a lot of time reviewing it maybe a couple times a week and not really getting it. So I really like that. I think it's a really good idea. Some of you probably already do the make and use the flashcards. How many do that? How many use flashcards? Sometimes you can color code those if you want to. Uh, that's a visual. It's a kinesthetic. And you add the voice, it becomes um, auditory. Keep something to manipulate, to manipulate in your hand, like a cush ball. That would be very kinesthetic. Um, not as much auditory, um, not as much visual, although sometimes the colors are nice to look at, and sometimes that helps you to, to stay, as I said, stay focused. Talk and walk while reading and studying. Those of you who are kinesthetic, you don't have to sit all the time, and maybe you shouldn't. You might read a little bit and then get up and walk around and process what you just read. So you process it by talking it loud, loud or visually seeing it in your head. 
So you take a break from incoming information and you get out there and you actually go through and walk it and talk it. And you would be surprised how much you are going to remember. That's a very, so it's a very good piece uh, for anyone, but particularly for kinesthetic. Study in a rocking chair on a treadmill or exercise bike. If you're kinesthetic and you like the movement, these are good pieces for you to incorporate. So if you've thrown out exercise for the semester because you can't fit it in, maybe you can fit it in because it might enhance your learning. Um, making concept maps, mind maps, concept maps, it's a visual. You can make it an auditory. It's also kinesthetic by action. Sometimes we can replicate tasks at home that we, uh, maybe we can just design something that we're trying to learn or maybe we can replicate something that's happening in the, in, that the uh, instructor has demonstrated perhaps and we can do it at home as well in order to have an action that we can work through. Problems repetitively. Those of you who are dealing with math at all, uh, doing a problem once or twice, talking, if you're auditory, you need to talk it out loud, visually see it, and of course you're kinesthetically doing it, that's action. But you need to remember that problems, if you do it a couple times, you don't really have it. You need to do a problem at least 10 to 12 times to feel so comfortable in that problem that you could do it mechanically in your sleep. Otherwise, you may not be able to pull that information in that back up and on the day of a test your mind goes blank. So you need to rework it a lot of times using all three, the auditory, the visual, and the kinesthetic. You want to be sure you read chap, uh, textbook chapters prior to class lecture, especially, well, all students, that's an obligation of all students to do. However, if you're auditory, you, it's very important that you do because you, cannot, you need to listen to the lecture in class is what you need to do. So if I have everything out, I can fully listen to the lecture in class, get the information. If I've got my notes out, then as I listen to information, I can highlight what the instructor talks about. And then I'm, because if you're trying to take notes and listen at the same time, it's very difficult to do because speech goes much faster than your writing hand. So again, um, it's, it's good. So again, the reading of the textbook, again, auditory visual and kinesthetic, you want to do it before class so you have the information background. Take abbreviated notes from text and in class for review. Again, these are all auditory. You, you say it out loud. Uh, you're you're going to do it uh, visually and it's kinesthetic. Uh, drawing graphs, the, this again we pretty much talked about. You can do that to uh, supplement your learning. Observe demonstrations, very much a, um, a visual and a kinesthetic, and I put the speech to it, it becomes an auditory. Visualize information, ideas or pictures in your head. You can do this, a visual person definitely does this, an auditory person can also do this, but put the words to it and it also becomes an action. Um, using colored highlighters on charts, concept maps, the rest of these pretty, I would like to mention this one. Um, auditory people really need to get involved in discussions. We, we briefly talked about whether it's in a group or it's in the classroom or it's a partner. Very, very important for you to hear information. Teaching is also another good. If you can teach anyone, even if you can teach your dog or your cat or your horse or a friend or a, a significant other, uh, they may not want to listen or they may not want to learn it, but you know, it, it's value for you, especially if you're an auditory person. I'd also like to mention the review tapes. If you're auditory, this is a very good idea, especially if you have a length of, of uh, drive. And that is to tape a 10-minute segment of information you need to know and then a 10-minute segment of very background lar uh, Largo music uh, that's 60 decibels or below, simply because that's relaxing, elevator-type music, so to speak. Uh, you may not like that music, but it's, what you want to use here, you listen to 10 minutes of the tape, then 10 minutes of the music comes on, which during that time you reflect. You either talk to yourself out loud about what you just heard in the learning piece of it, you visualize because that becomes an action too, and then, then another after the music, another 10 minutes of information comes on that you can focus on, and then another 10 minutes of music. If you have to drive for an hour and a half to get here, which many students do or more, you plug this tape in, it can, can be some of your, your study time 
because if this is the primary way that you learn is auditory, then you, this is an excellent way for you to get this information. You also can go down to sleep with it at night, and I know this works. Um, if you go, just go down to sleep with it, your brain does not go to sleep at night. It, it's when it sorts out all the information that you've tried to put in it during the day, as much as it can remember. So it sorts out, and then first thing in the morning when you get up, again, listen to that tape, and you won't be surprised how much information you will re remember. So key here is know your learning style. I would go down through this sheet, check off maybe some of these strategies that you're not presently using that you think might be good for your learning strategy that you'd like to add to your, your present strategies that you use to see whether some of these may not be beneficial and save you time in the long run. Next week, we're going to be talking about, I think it's, I think it's textbook reading, also a very good one. So, good luck. Let me know how it goes.